Okay, boys and girls, what we're going to be making today are two different dishes, actually. We're going to be making meatloaf and meatballs. And we're going to be using this. See, what I like to do is I like to make a bunch of meatballs at the same time and freeze them. Same with the meatloafs. Ugh. Raw! This is actually a really good way to buy your hamburger because you get it from, I get it from a restaurant supply place and it is remarkably cheaper than buying it at the grocery store. I also do the same thing with primal cuts of meat and I'm going to show you how to cut those in another video. See, this was like 29 bucks for this big thing of hamburger, which would have cost me like eight and a half million if I bought it small portion size. Okay, so we got all the hamburger done. Okay, so what we're going to put in there, I'm going to put four eggs. Four eggs cracked in there. Now, because I'm doing two different things, I'm going to start with a base, which is going to be the meatloaf base. And from there, we're going to turn that meatloaf base into the meatballs. Now, I ran the onions through the food processor first because I like to get them really nice and fine for two reasons. One reason is big chunks of meat, I mean, sorry, big chunks of onion tend to, I don't know, make everything look ugly. It makes the meatballs come apart. Also, I have two picky eaters on my hands and we have to hide the onions. Okay. Okay, from there, little sprinkle of pepper. And that's to taste, of course. A little sprinkle of salt. That's kosher salt for those of you paying attention at home. So it looks like more salt than it is. Okay, now this is a family secret that probably everybody does. This is poultry dressing, poultry seasoning. And we'll put about a tablespoon of that in. Okay, and just a pinch more just because we like it. Okay, now I'm going to put a splash of milk because I find it helps to bind everything together. Now usually people would put in breadcrumbs or bread, but I, I don't. I'm more of a anti-bread person, so it's not going in. Now from here, we mix her all up. This is why it's good to have a really big bowl like this, although you could do this in batches if you wanted to. Remember, you're just trying to get everything mixed. <sighs> Once I was doing this, and the uh, hamburger had partially frozen in the fridge. I had the fridge set too high, 
And, oh my god, I couldn't even feel my fingers after very long. Now usually I also put a little bit of Worcestershire sauce in, but I went to the cupboard and I was out. <laughs> So, we'll just have to do without. And what is good cooking but making do with what you have? Pans. Okay, and we load them up. These aren't for supper now, these are actually for a later meal. They'll be frozen. Worst thing about dealing with hamburger. Your hands get very, very greasy very, very quickly. There we go. Now you just want to put tin foil on so they don't dry off. And what I'll be doing with this is I will be cooking it for about an hour at 350 in the oven there. Usually what I do from that point, I don't even drain it or brown it. I'll just take it and let it cool and as soon as it's cool I'll put it in a Ziploc bag, suck out the air out, and freeze it. That way When it comes time to reheat the meatloaf, I can just take the whole tray, take it out of the Ziploc bag, and just pop it back in the oven for another hour. It'll thaw completely, and the grease will actually help keep it moist. You can drain the grease off then. I'm using a medium ground hamburger, so there's going to be a little bit of grease. But anyway, you can drain the grease off then if you like, and give it a little bit of browning, and it is perfect. Okay, now I'm going to start on the meatballs in just a second, but I'm going to make that another video.